Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your, do you really think I was gonna shoot a Ford Raptor? Come on, man. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Ball Cloud. Today we're going over the TAC 501. This is gonna be the new product from Dillon Rifle Company. It's essentially a facelifted version of the infamous McMillan TAC 50. So let's go over it. Crikey, this is the yellow spotted lizard of the Dillon era range. A ferocious species. Oh, oh. Now, the thing about 50 cows is that they are rather loud. So to quiet them down a bit, it's always good to have a can to use in the event that you find yourself in the proximity of the 50 BMG round. Now, this is gonna be a giant CGS can. Don't make this weird. Now, Casey's gonna throw this can on here. He uh, designed this particular firearm, so what he says goes. So we'll just follow his lead, right, Casey? That's right, we send rounds down range. That's what we like to do. That's what we like to do, it's a good time. Have you ever been doxxed on the internet? I have. Have you ever Googled your name? You can find anything on the internet. You can find your email address, your phone number, your address, your family's phone numbers. Aura will help you out with that problem. This information is accessible because of data brokers. Aura will go ahead and contact those data brokers to have them scrub from all the telemarketers, spammers, so on and so forth. Aura will even opt out of junk mail and telemarketing campaigns. You can use my link at aura.com slash administrative. It'll, it'll pop down in the description down below or QR code on the screen for two weeks of free trial to see how much of your info is out there that Aura can help you scrub. Aura also monitors emails and passwords to help you see if that info is floating around the dark web. And also gives you recommendations on what to do if it is floating around on the dark web. Aura's app also features a VPN password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need inside one app. App. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you two weeks free trial with my link. You'll be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. So a big thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Go find out all that dirty little information. Your dirty little secrets are on the internet. Help keep yourself safe. Trust me, from a guy who wears a ball club on the internet has been doxxed before. Now, of course, we also have to thank the Patreon users. Big thank you to my Patreon guys. Get in there. It's a great, we have Discord. We talk about girls, mainly in a day, Armist and Blade Runner. It gets weird. It's a good time though. It's a good time. Get a good community going, as well as merchandise really helps out the channel. <gasps> now, a little illustration goes a long way. So I figured let's compare 50 BMG kinetic energy wise, at least for the dum-dums in the audience. And I'm not saying you're a dum-dum because, well, I am, but I'm a dum-dum too, so. You're in good company. But we'll go against 5.56 all the way up to 30.6 to 50 cal. So let's illustrate some kinetic energy. And I got some 1% milk out there, which is basically water, so it's not gonna be missed. Uh, drink whole milk. Be a man. Skimmed a little bit too much off the top. Well, <laughs> skimmed? Oh, you guys, come on, anybody? All right. Wow, what a bad joke that was. Now I got a, I got a small melon here, and I know Typically guys aren't fans of small melons, we all like big melons. But this one's about the size of like a human brain head, so should work out. Now of course, Brandon Herrera has white claws. I figured let's try, a, let's try something a little bit fancier. Let's get a little outside his wheelhouse and do some Sapporos. I figured, you know, 30-06 and 50 cal, it's been used on Sapporo drinking folks before in the past. Oh, I probably shouldn't say that one. That was... Anticlimactic. That one was uh, not a 10 out of 10 for me. Of course, now we gotta do some 30 out six. <laughs> Sorry, what are you doing, man? <laughs> oh man, it just zips right on through. <laughs> too powerful. It's too strong. I have high hopes for this, and I don't think it's gonna work. All right, now we got some Japanese beer. This is for grandpa. That was a lot more satisfying. I like that one a little bit more. All right, now it's time for the 50 cal. I hate skim milk. I hate skim milk. 
Now, for the sake of safety, we decided to push the targets out a little bit further to 200. Uh, just due to the host range, they are like, hey, let's play it safe. And I say, of course, daddy, host range, we will play to your rules. So we're going to zip them from a little bit further away, but we still have some GoPros to capture it. Just another day at the office. <laughs> Best job I've ever had. I, I feel like I'm in a Jurassic Park movie right now. We're like testing a 50 BMG to go hunt dinosaurs and the main character just landed. So it, it actually looks really cool. Did you get hit? Ooh. I did, that first shot hit me in the glasses. Got a little blood on you, dude. Smile for the camera. <laughs> The embarrassing thing is I've now like spent more money on 50 BMG ammo trying to shoot a Sapporo can than the Sapporo can will ever be worth. Bruh. I'm, so I'm sorry, guys. We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. It's only like $500 worth of 50 BMG rounds. Okay, now this is a properly thick all right, now I was uh, picking it up, I was moving it around. I realized after shooting this gun today, I don't actually have to go to the gym after this, but I think I still will because the gain stop for no man's weakness. So here is the reality about this firearm, guys. This is gonna be well outside my wheelhouse. Oh, buzzword, wheelhouse. But seriously though, a bolt gun such as this, it's history, it's design, it's manufacturing easily far exceeds my skill set and my knowledge. When it comes to certain details of this gun, I'm a big chimp, I'm a big monkey, and I need all the help I can get. So I did get some help from one of the engineers himself. Casey, get over here. All right, Casey, so I was talking to the powers at B, and essentially what I gathered is that you are the man behind designing this rifle. I am. So rock me through this real quick. So it's funny you say rock me through this because it's built off the legacy that is Rock McMillan. Mm -hmm. So Rock McMillan, designed and built the very first TAC-50. Okay. And we're building off of that legacy. So what we've done is we've picked Rock McMillan's brain mm -hmm. till there's nothing to pick left. Okay. I've asked him a million questions and we've taken what he has learned through his decades of experience mm -hmm. and we've started to incorporate that into the advancements that we want for the 50 BMG. The biggest thing you're gonna know is cosmetics. Mm -hmm. That The McMillan TAC-50, it was all about just getting out and getting it into either SOCOM or getting it into some operator's hands. This, we want it not only in their hands, but we mm -hmm. want it in general users, right? We want it in the bench rest guys. We want it in people that just want to go out and have a good time. Yeah. So we've updated a lot of the aesthetics. You can see we've went with a nice Cerakote finish on the entire thing, still running the nice nickel plating on the bolt head and the bolt body itself. But we've updated a lot of things on the stock itself. So right here, you'll see a little clearance. We're actually working with another company to get a front mount so you can put night vision. Night vision. You can put yeah. thermal optics on there. The old TAC-50 doesn't have that capability. Right. We want that capability. When you're sitting there and you're trying to hit something at 1200 yards, night vision can reach out that far if you've got the updated stuff. The other thing is, is a lot of people, there's new bipods, there's new, you know, if you want to run laser or IR or anything like that, we've got M-Lock on there. We're actually running a heavy duty Atlas bipod on mm -hmm. there. And that allows us a lot more maneuverability when you're in the prone position. We also went with the carbon fiber stock. Yeah. So fiberglass was the manufacturing days of your back when they were doing it. Mm. We wanted to go with Graybo. They do a great job on their carbon fiber. Adjustable cheek rest with spacer system. Nice. From that, we also went with the bottom safety. So the other issue that you run into with the TAC-50, when you are on point right here, your thumb can be up here and you, you have to really articulate your hand to get up because that 50 cal is such a big round. Yeah. You have to articulate your hand off. We went with the safety bottom safety down here and it actually makes it a little bit easier to keep your hand on the grip. Yeah, I really do like the ergonomics of that grip up here. I like the ergonomics of this grip. I found it really comfortable to get up in. You can rest your hand. And if you wanted to have a nice comfy rest on the gun and then just a seamless transition to that trigger, it felt like a very, seamless like design for like the, your biomechanics, right? Mm -hmm. it, felt, it felt like a no brainer. So I really do like that aspect. And you hit on a big thing that a lot of precision shooters hit on is this right here. So this area right here is yeah. called the palm swell. That's what you want your hand to rest up against. And it enables the user to mm -hmm. rest their thumb up here. Yeah. So and that, 
That way you're not yeah. pulling on the shots. Okay. And yeah. keep and keep in mind, guys, when it comes to long distance shooting, I by no means am an expert, so I'm just like, I'm, I'm dipping my toes in with this kind of project. So maybe in the future, but for now, like I may have been doing stuff that the long range guys have been just hooning and hawing over. Ah! Ah! So keep that in mind. All right. That's that's <laughs> the beauty of it, right? <laughs> I mean. It really is a beautiful, sexy gun. It is. Now, here's the hard question for you. Why would I want to go with a bolt action 50 cal, say when a Barrett exists? So, bolt action 50 cal mm -hmm. allots you a couple other things. What this is, is this allows you precision. Right. Not saying the Barrett's not precise, okay. but when you've got that big chunk of steel just reciprocating back and forth, that becomes... Uh, almost a shock to the system, right? right. You, you shoulder that thing and you shoot and you feel that recoiling system. If you've shot the difference between an AR-10 and an AR-15, you can feel the right. difference in recoil. Some more mass movement. More mass, more movement, right? Gotcha. So this gives you the accuracy, but without the movement. Barrett has done a great job. They have really set a name for themselves. They've established their position. What we're really trying to cater to mm. is the shooter and the experience of really being able to act as a surgeon. Yeah. You want to get in there and precisely take out what you need to take out. Okay. And that's really what the, we're allotting to on this one. Interesting. Now, I, just from the outside looking in, is there any sort of heat coming from like the 338 Lapua crowd versus the 50 cal crowd? Is there like a, is there like a gnashing of heads there? Uh, interestingly enough, no. Th there's yeah. not a lot of competition. When you start setting yourself mm. into that large bore, you, when I say large bore, I'm talking 375 and larger bore diameters. You yeah. start getting into that crowd, that's that's when you get into these big boys. Because mm. the, the 338 guys, they're they're a thousand yards. That you know you can you can hit a target out to a mile. Yeah. But you lose a lot of your energy. Yeah. That 375 shy tac, 408 shy tac, 50 BMG, they've got energy to deliver downrange. Interesting. And so when you step into that family, so the 375 guys. Mm -hmm. That's that's the ones that you're going to be competing with with this guy. Gotcha. 338, that's a solid round for anti-personnel. This is anti-material. Yeah, these, granted, these are questions that come from a very novice perspective. Well, I appreciate you stopping by, and it's always good to talk to the guys that worked on the project itself. So thanks for stopping by, Casey. You betcha. Now I'm going to talk about what it was like to shoot. So you uh, you're, you're free. Get I'm out. out. Here. Get out. Oh man, ran out of gas again. Now what was it like to shoot this Tac 501? Well. It's like trying to wrestle a crocodile after a while. At first it feels fun, but the more you do it, you start to really question your existence. And that was me. When I started shooting this bad boy, I was like, oh, this is really fun. This is a good time. And I was enjoying myself. There was this like strange arc. As I continued to shoot her, it became much more unpleasant, if I'm being honest. In the sense of we threw a can on there, we started using some higher velocity rounds. And so it started to hurt more. And it started to absolutely just destroy me, which, I mean, not destroy me, but it was definitely becoming more unpleasant. I would, could feel it in my jaw a lot more, especially when you're riding that stock, getting a good sight picture. So that was a factor. Then once you threw the suppressor off, it became a lot more manageable yet again. But still a very fun experience and a very unique one because this is actually my first time running a 50 cal bolt gun. Well, this is my like second time running a 50 cal bolt gun besides the Steyr. And I can definitely see this one has a good quality to it. Now, this isn't necessarily a firearms review. This isn't like a, hey, go out and buy it. This is technically a chance to show off a refurbished piece of history in a certain sense. So that's an, a cool little factor. Yeah, I'm out here with the Dylan guys and we're just showing off in that aspect, but it's like, um, it's more so for your entertainment. That sound fair? That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I call that fair. You take that deal, Udovich? i take that deal. So I wanted to do a quick disclaimer on the 50 cal video. I mentioned in the video that I was getting beaten up using the gun. Now that was after 50 plus rounds of ammunition running a 50 BMG bolt action rifle. So the recoil to begin with was actually pretty smooth. It just adds up over time. So I do want to give Dylan Rifle Co. that credit where credit is due. So for the gun, it's good at recoil. I'm not trying to like beat them up per se about the recoil, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay. BMG, big, big mama gun. Trigger was very nice. I enjoyed using that trigger. I found it to be very pleasant. Yeah, it's, it's really not that bad. For it being, what, five pounds? Yeah. That's really not that bad of a trigger. So all in all, I enjoyed it. Also the weight, this thing is, is, is rather thick. You could probably really get a good workout with it. Anyway, sorry, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments 
are a sacrifice to the algorithm God, a God of which who enjoys your internet engagement on my channel. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon, external ways to support the channel, as well as merchandise. As always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'm going to do a wide, wide no scope. I matter! <laughs>